Hello and welcome back to this playlist, a calculation of rigid connection from a beam to a column. Beam was HEA200 connected to a column HEB300 with an end plate of 16 millimeter. We went through hand calculation and then we modeled with ANSYS. We determined the stiffness uh, compared with the Euro code and also uh, ANSYS model. Now in this video I'm going to model the same frame with RFM and to show you how to apply the failure or yielding of a connection in RFM. The uh, software is RFM from Global, uh, RFM 6, the version is 6020065 and I have to thank Global organization to providing the license for this tutorial. First you come to this uh, page you can make a new and when you hit the new file you will see for example here I have the project name in the folder of RFM for my channels and here you can write the for example rigid connection model or partial rigid or semi rigid perhaps better semi rigid connection model I prefer to have upward uh, positive also coming back to here. Now we are going to have a, a plane model. Now the first thing is to assign a material, double click on materials and here we can select the material that we want. For example, I'm going to use S355JR according to Euro code and that's it then we need to have sections or cross sections we can select the cross section that we want heb and then go to the norm that you want heb 300 check that you have s355jr from here and that's all also new section from the same pattern this time HEA, the norm and 200, the same material. Now we can sketch our profile HEB 300 as the profile for the column. And from here you can go through six meters. Uh, so the six meters or above six meters in our calculation was because we have been modeling by details here six meters would be quite fine and you can copy and paste this in seven meters center to center of the columns and also I can uh, select these two and go to members divide member and intermediate one node would be enough now i have the place that i can put the beams here we can select the beam uh, is hea 200 from this point to this and also from here to here the next is putting the supports select the supports from here i'm going to have fixed if it is very small in uh, RFM6, you have possibility to click right on that support and adjust the size to see it better. Then we are going to apply the load. As far as by default, we have self-fate and we didn't consider that in our calculation. Here we can have another one and loading or whatever name you please. Here is the force and we went through 15 kN per meter first. And if you just run this model, hitting the show results, and if we go through the internal force, MY, here we can see that it's 60 something. I can select this one, 
turn off the load 60.5 but if you remember it was 40 something so if you are modeling with the software like RFM and you assume that it's completely rigid then your bending moment will be higher than what exactly would happen and here this is very close to QLS square divided by 12. Now I can just uh, come back and adjust it a little bit for modification. Before that, let's have a look on what we calculated for this with our RFM, uh, with our MATCAT sheet. Mu was 1, and for 15 kilonewton per meter, the stiffness is 1.710 power by 4. So we can adjust this and apply this to the calculation. You just need to select these two, double click on one of them. And now I'm going to have hinges. If I apply the hinges and go to the tab, you have possibility to define this hinge. So here we can see that by default, phi y is free. It means that it is free to rotate, but we have some kind of uh, rotational capacity, which is 1.7 E4 kilonewton meter. That's all. If we apply that, and you should apply it to also the other direction, the other side of the beam at the end. And now if we look at it and run it, if you remember, it was 44 something in uh, uh, ANSYS and 48 in our hand calculation. And we are using the uh, stiffness according to hand calculation. Here we can see that still it is bigger than what we calculated if i select this item we can see it is 53 the reason is that the beam is from center to center of the column connected to the center line of the columns so to solve that part and coming back to more accurate results you just need to select these two double click and then here we can put the eccentricity. If you come to eccentricity and go to the create new member eccentricity, here you can see that we have the option actual offset from adjoining member. And if you select it directly, you can see that automatically it assumes that it, the member is coming to the edge of the other member. Now we need to apply this also at the end of the member. And if we select, we can see that it's exactly on the edge of, of the column. So here you can uh, run the model and see the results. If I select this beam and we look at the answers you can see that it's about 48.73 which is quite close to what we calculated by hand however if you want to have more accurate results which i would not recommend just to have or just to look the option here you can modify the eccentricity instead of relative to section you can go with absolute x is the uh, longitudinal direction and we know that it is 16 millimeter away from the uh, end of the section now that we applied 16 millimeter we can see that at the other end also 16 millimeter is uh, applied how it uh, looks like if we look at the modified section we can see that here it is 16 millimeter shorter but if we look at the other side, we can see that it's coming towards the section and it is not as we expected. Select these two, coming back to our case. Here you have two options. One option is modifying this and change this if you have another coordinate system. Or you can have another member eccentricity configuration. How you can make it? You can just select this one and then 
I can delete this number two, copy this number one, and now instead of 16, I can adjust it to be minus 16. So here, if we come to the case, we can see that in both ends, we have 16 millimeters shorter in one end, and we have 16 millimeters shorter in the other end. And now we can solve this and we can check the results. 48.23 it doesn't affect that much but uh, still something the other thing is how to adjust the stiffness in a way that after reaching to a certain value then it starts to yield that is also possible we can select these two members double click and go to hinge and here i can modify what i have here as you can see nonlinearity here is set to be none but here you can uh, adjust it in a way that it is partially active or with diagram or plastic diagram or something like that here if you select diagram and you come to here you have the options of rotation and moment coming back to what we did with the ANSYS model here you can see that we have the bending moment versus theta as a graph showing that uh, this is absolute theta and this is bending moment we can just bring these 50 sets to our calculation in RFM as the diagram here you can see that we do not have anything so if you here this option of import table data from a spreadsheet uh, i didn't check why it is not working but here we can set the system to import by copy and paste the only thing that you need is just insert a row control i for 50 times and now we have 50 sets coming back to the top from here you can select theta and bending moment control copy and then here just paste here we can see that it is symmetric it means that both uh, bending moment in both directions would work similar even though in our case it doesn't but we do not have bending moment uh, in the other direction so it would be pretty fine for now uh, something important if you do not see your fee to be in degree you need to set it in the uh, setting i can show you how to do it i can just come back out here also after diagram end then you can write down this is a kind of yielding if you go with yielding it means that at the end it will be constant value or you can set it to be failure or continuous or stop or something like that so for that if you come to the navigator right click on the model and then units and decimal places and go directly to uh, a static analyzes you will see that here rotations by default is on meter radian and you can select it degree and change it to for example three digits if you want and then press ok now if we run it right now it might not be a surprise for us because uh, the load is quite low and here if i select this member and here you can see that it's still 48 because it is not reaching to its failure for having that uh, results to be effective we need to increase the load i can change this it was double so 30 kilonewton and here you can change it to 45 and then we can compare our results with what we got earlier in the ANSYS model now here we can see that at the end it's going to be less than 90 kN meter we can check from here 
88 and this is 161 kilonewton meter for this bottom beam. We can compare this value with ANSYS that we already had in our previous video we went through together. So when the load is going to be for this value, moment about Z axis is going to be 88.43 kilonewton. And here we can see that it's 88 point, exactly the same value because you applied the same graph from here. To check if we have the same value for the bending moment in the middle, we can just go through this uh, model and another prop, moment reaction, geometry selection, I can hide this body and then we can select these edges, the other edges, these edges. Let's check the results. So here 161 about Z, 161.62, exactly the same value as we got from RFM, 161, and here also 161.6268. So the reason is that we assign the same value for here. For sure, if uh, you want to have accurate result for the top beam, you need to uh, modify that as well for calculation of the uh, stiffness. Here is the comparison between the uh, ANSYS model and this RFM, but uh, the main idea of this video was how to model uh, semi-rigid connections in RFM uh, to just save the time. Perhaps if you have a very big and large uh, project, then it might not be possible to go through every detail. But as a general rule, this is how you can get the accurate result. That is the end of this video. Uh, we went through the modeling of, uh, of the frame that we had in our calculation for the entire playlist with RFM from the Lubal and uh, we understood how to adjust the failure of a connection according to the options that we have in uh, RFM. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.